Okay, we're doing something a little different on comic books out of context, because usually what I would do is I'd grab an old comic book and try to see if it makes sense, right? That was kind of the whole point. But this time I've got a comic book completely out of context because it was just randomly sent to me and I have no idea why. And I don't really know what it's all about, um, you know, other than just sitting there and reading it. Um, I got a white, plain white envelope in the mail um, and there was nothing on it except an address label uh, addressed to me with a return address of Sigma Comics. Uh, didn't say anything else. Um, so I open it up and inside is a comic to take a look at. Now that's not all that uncommon. This happens quite a bit, actually getting review comics. I either get PDFs by email or I get a paper copy in the mail. Um, common. That's, that's how comics get out to be reviewed. The difference is they usually come with some sort of press release or a letter from the publisher or the editor or the author. Um, a lot of times it's the same person um, explaining why they wrote the comic or what they wanted to achieve by putting the comic together. Um, a lot of times with information about when it's coming out. Um, you know, all sorts of information. When it's going to be in the diamond catalog, stuff like that. Uh, in this case, um, the only thing that it came with was a business card taped to the back. Um, so I have a comic book and I don't know anything about it. There, there's no other information given other than that H.H. German is the creator uh, and he's uh, Sigma Comics. Apparently their tagline is justice for all. So, all right, we'll uh, take a look at this. So issue one of an eight issue series here comes calico and we've got our hero here on the front and it just says run so apparently that's um him speaking uh, and and there's nothing else to do but open it up and read it right now i i did read this so i'm just going to kind of walk through my thoughts as i was reading this um first of all i, I will say it smells like an old comic um, it's newsprint with ink. Um, it's it's kind of printed in that old style. It's got that alternate comics uh, type smell to it. If you've read any of those, it's that classic comic book smell, which is a definite bonus right there. Two ninety nine, not a bad price for a modern comic. Um, but just looking at the front, I mean, the cover's you know striking portrait of the uh, main character there. Uh, but again, doesn't really give you a whole lot. Um, other than, I guess, the fact that he's uh, mean and dark. Um, then on the back, we've got our Sigma, Justice for All. Uh, but then here was the first clue that something was up. Uh, we have this explicit warning on the back. Um, and it says, Rated M, 18 plus years old, explicit content. And that is correct. <laughs> um, this is not a book for children. Um, I can tell you that much right now. Uh, opening it up. It's it's kind of um, jarring opening it up because uh, on the inside of the front cover, um, there's an ad here for AmericanHumane.org. Um, the American Humane Association, I think it is. Um, these are the people that, uh, at the end of movies, when you see the credits and it says, like, no animals were harmed in the making of this film, those type people. Um, they're not like, um, like say, PETA. Uh, PETA, who are like... Um, you know, if you own a pet, it's like having a slave. You know, they're not like those people. They they support service animals uh, and things like that. Um, they just don't want to see animals like you know hurt and abused and whatever. So you're like, oh, okay, that's 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 cool. You know, uh, give them your support, and it's got the the URL, and so you're like, okay, Sigma Comics supports American Humane. Okay, cool. Uh, then you go to the next page. And it shows a dog being strangled and then having his uh, head bashed in. Um, and I can't, I can't show it. Like, I can't show you this page to show you, but it is, in fact, a dog uh, getting strangled and getting his head bashed in. And we hear uh, someone saying, please no. And there's an asterisk uh, saying that is translated from Mandarin. Now, I know there are some parts of Asia where people eat dogs. And I don't know if this is supposed to represent someone who's doing this for food or if this is someone doing it 
like is a red room on the internet, uh, like a serial killer in training type of thing, if that's what's supposed to be going on here. Um, but I can tell you that it's insanely graphic. Um, it's definitely making use of that 18 plus um, disclaimer or warning or whatever. Um, and it's definitely not for everybody. Uh, and then the next page, we have uh, apparently our hero who lives in Red Hook, Brooklyn, it says. He's watching this on a videotape. Well, I say a videotape. Uh, that shows how old I am. He's watching this uh, on a recording, um, and he's trying to figure out who it is who made this video. And he's got someone uh, he's talking to um, online uh, who, who's fed him this video. They're doing some research. They're trying to figure out who it was who recorded this so that Calico can go track them down uh, and get revenge on them. Um, and then he goes to a gym, um, and he's, uh, you know, working on boxing and he's talking about his boxing moves. So I'm guessing the writer of this book, um, H.H. German, uh, is someone who enjoys boxing, uh, because he's writing a lot of information about boxing in here. Uh, so I'm guessing he is familiar with boxing. Uh, it goes back to him thinking about what it was like being a child uh, and thinking about instilling fear in people and instilling fear in bullies. So you have sort of that, uh, you know, Batman, Punisher, whatever, instilling the fear in somebody, uh, you know, if they're a villain. Um, and then he grabs his suit. It says it's millions of dollars worth of technology. Every government in the world would love to get their hands on it. Too bad for them that would never happen. And then he turns to this floating camera and says, Bumble, it's showtime. But there's never an explanation as to where this suit comes from. Uh, who spent this millions of dollars? Is this guy a millionaire? Doesn't look like it. I mean, he's living in Red Hook. Doesn't seem like a guy who has a lot of money. Um, so is there like a benefactor? Did he randomly find this? Um... We don't know. It's not. It's never explained. Um, there's plenty of opportunities, I think, in the story where there could have been some more character world building, and it's just not given. And I don't know if maybe that's something he's planning to do later on, because it does say on the cover that this is one of an eight-issue series, and perhaps in his mind he's thinking over the course of eight issues he's going to expand upon all of this. But the problem is, in your first issue, you kind of need to establish some of this stuff um and without establishing some of this stuff you're just kind of leaving these questions and I i'm wondering are you are you are you writing uh, uh let's see how do i want to put this i want to put this nicely right because i don't i don't want to be be mean about this but but are you leaving intentional plot holes to be filled later um, or have you left these holes thinking that they don't matter? Um, and I'll tell you that they do matter. Um, these questions need to be answered, and they need to be answered fairly early uh, to hit the ground running. If you're not going to answer them, then they need to be addressed, and addressed in a way where someone's asking the question, and then within the story, not getting an answer so that you're at least addressing it narratively, even if you're not addressing it within um, actually, you know, explaining it to the reader. Because I'm sitting here looking at this going, what, what, like, why, how, what? And it's never given. Um, and it just seems like either you didn't figure it out or you just didn't think it mattered. And to me, it just kind of, feels a little lazy but again maybe that's something you think you know hey we're, we're going to answer that in issue three uh, and this is just issue one um but the problem is i don't i don't know that you know i'm at issue one um i kind of wish some of that information was there now we get a little further on in the book he's tracking down some people who were uh, apparently big game hunters um it, it shows somehow he knows that they tracked down this lion. Uh, she was with her cubs. They were going to sell the cubs to um, you know, on the black market to people who wanted uh, illegal pets. 
um, and, and things like that. And so they just wanted to kill this um, uh, lion just so that they could. Um, so he goes to their house and of course his floating camera drone thing has gotten surveillance. Um, he says that he doesn't eat meat. So I don't know if this is a, a vegan, uh, you know, vegetarian revenge comic um or if that's just a you know character trait he wanted to throw in there i don't know but again i'm assuming that um hh H. german the writer of the story i'm assuming that he is uh vegetarian at least um it talks about how uh he says i'm no meat eater but i know that that's ostrich tenderloins go for 50 bucks a pound and he says it like it's a problem i don't know is ostrich endangered is that an endangered species are you not supposed to eat ostrich meat i didn't think so but again is he just mad at people for eating meat i, I don't know um so it shows them uh you know killing the lion it shows the cubs being taken from the mom being sold on the black market um so we, it's very clear that these are these are bad people you know these are not sometimes for the sake of conservation you do get to to you go big game hunting because you have to thin the herd. Um, you know, there have been stories every so often. You see someone on Facebook, you know, some dentist, he went out and shot some big animal in Africa, and then people go out and protest and whatever. And it turns out, well, actually, um, that was part of the conservation effort because sometimes, you know, uh, an endangered uh, herd, um, in their efforts to reestablish them, they, they grow too quickly and they're uh, outgrowing the food source that they feed off of and suddenly they can endanger um, the animals they feed off of or the area that they feed from that they graze from um, and so you have to kind of trim the herd in order to keep them from destroying um, you know other parts of the ecosystem you got to keep things in balance right uh, but this is obviously not that so they want to make that clear um, so at least i appreciated the forethought that went into telling that part of the story um, but we have our hero showing up with a box um, he's having these people sign for it um, and then it turns out that there's a, a letter uh, along with the box and it's apparently from their daughter and she feels bad that um uh, that she's killed so many animals and she's torn to pieces by all the harm she's caused and the parents don't understand why would she say that because that's not how they raised her and when they um, get to the bottom of it there are pictures of her dismembered body uh, and when they turn around there is Calico in full uh, uniform and he's holding the severed head of their daughter um, and he then chops off the arms of the husband which makes him pass out um, the, the wife passes out, um, and then he begins to torture them. Graphically. For several pages. Um, and this is where the bulk of the 18 plus comes from in this comic. Um, these are pages I cannot share. Um, there are at least one, two, three, four, five five pages here that are going along with this whole torture uh, attack um, that he's doing and these are these are <laughs> I would I would almost put these at, at, at serial ki killer level torture um, this is hostile uh, level torture this is this isn't like Punisher going in and being like blam 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 you're dead revenge whatever walk away um, this is maybe Garth Ennis, uh, I guess you could say Garth Ennis Punisher would do uh, this type of thing. But the type of stuff he's doing here is not um, uh, not the type of stuff um, that, that I, was, I was very comfortable reading. I'll put it that way. Um, yeah, these are bad people, sure. Um, but the way that Calico, our, our hero, uh, is acting towards them is not very heroic uh either um and um honestly uh it, it's not the type of thing that that i would come back for um even though these are bad people um i i, I don't need this I don't, I don't need to be i don't need five pages of this um necessarily we get to the end he's back home um he's getting texts from um dog mama 
is the character talking about the research on this particular file shows that the subject is based in eastern China. Um, they're working with uh, somebody else there uh, on the file. They're trying to figure out who it is, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but there's another file, and that person is going to be in New York City for his sister's uh, twin sister's 40th birthday. And so um, he'll be able to get revenge on that person. Um, and that's where the book ends. So there's going to be another revenge killing coming soon because someone else um, did something, uh, some sort of torture to some animals, so he's going to torture them back. Um, here's, here's part of my, my thing with this, is when, say someone goes out and they do an illegal hunt, right? Like a big game hunt, and they're like, blam, they shoot the animal. Um, terrible terrible people okay in no way uh do i endorse that do i say these are good people do i try to excuse it i mean definitely yeah that's a that's a problem but what he's doing back to them is worse than what they were doing um and so it, it again it rises to the level where he's a serial killer uh with the way he's torturing and attacking these people they went out and they hunted, they killed, and so now they are being horribly tortured. Um, I, I, I have to say that the, the art here, um, artist and letterer Javier Or Orbic Orbach, uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Um, it, it's it's good. Um, it's it's very well done artwork it's got kind of a classic style that you can tell there's a couple spots where he um it looks like he kind of cheated a little bit um he did some digital zooms on his uh artwork instead of redrawing something or um he copied and pasted and reused the same frame a couple times which uh, fine whatever um that's not that big of a deal uh nowadays but a lot of his work has some pretty good detail to it um the, the the characters all stand apart um there's no real confusion over who's talking or anything like that so it, it looks really good the coloring's good the lettering's good it's a very well done very professional looking comic from from front to back the story is just a little too out there um if you're into torture stories um, if you're into the hostel movies, if you're into the collector movies, um, those type of horror films that are all about the torture and the dismemberment, um, the the mermaid, what's the mermaid fairy saga or whatever it is from Japan. Uh, if you're into those type of movies and you want to, you you want a comic that has that type of content to it. Great, here you go. Um, here's something for you. Um, but it's just not the type of thing that I could recommend. And as far as being out of context, not, not knowing anything about it, going in and reading it, um, it was a little off-putting when I got to some of that stuff. Uh, the, the first page was, was, was very off-putting. Um, seeing the, the dog being strangled and having its head bashed in, uh, that was not the type of thing that I wanted to see um, necessarily uh, on the first page of a comic story. Um, but again, our hero, uh, for having this technology, this suit, this flying drone camera, um, getting this information from people, doing research into who's doing this torture and murder and stuff, uh, we're not told anything. We're not given anything. We don't know anything. Uh, I, I just, I, I can't really recommend this to anybody out there unless you're really into horror and the torture and the gore and you want to see that kind of stuff but if you are not into that kind of crazy stuff then i would give this one a pass but anyway thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.